Right, welcome back. You join me in the tiny shack. Uh, yeah, I'm using my phone as a monitor for the GoPro because I can't see the screen. And I don't often use technology much. And I'm like, does it work? So for those that haven't watched it before, this is a five foot square room in a shed um, for radio work. Like, HF radio, ham radio, ham radio, how much radio? Um, and it's it's not connected to the building at all. The power is produced to operate everything in this room is purely from the sun. I've got two 40 watt solar panels on the roof, a 110 amp hour leisure battery down there, and then the 800 watts Victron inverter there. And I've been using cheap Chinese charge controllers. This is one for the first one from about eight nine years ago. Paid about £6.50 for this and it eventually packed up after quite a few years. So well worth the money, probably the cheapest. And back in the day, the most common, everyone was buying these. Um, I've got stuff lying around, analogue voltmeters I've used and systems and amp meters. Um, and I was looking at the blue Victron charge controller to replace that charge controller. Because the Victron MPPT Bluetooth is obviously MPPT. It's Bluetooth, so I can get the display on my phone. Um, but I didn't like that. I didn't like a blue box with a blinking light. I like screens. I like information. I don't want to be pulling my phone out, getting an app um, to see stuff. So, as much as it would be nice to replace that with the Victron, I've gone a completely different brand. There's these systems look good when everything's the same brand and tidy and don't have wires everywhere. Two USB ports, about 15, 20 quid off the internet and they're okay, they work. But you have to toggle, cycle through the menu, the display, to see the information. I'm not a fan. The one in the car, so I've got a small, small Gola solar go box in the car, has a screen where you can see that power coming in, power going out, power of the battery, state of the battery, you can see it all on one screen, it's good, but it's not MPPT, that's not MPPT, that's not MPPT, multi-point tracking better charge controllers, I'm not going to give you the whole evaluation of how it works, uh, because I'm, a, I'm really good at pronouncing things wrong, giving the wrong info what there and then, unless it's written down and reading it, I'm not going to bring the information up on the screen and read it from there. Other people do that. People do tests, they do charts, they do comparisons. I don't do that. I whack stuff on the wall, wire it up, and hope it works. Anyway, we're going off and we're starting to waffle. But this system works because I don't use a lot of power. I only come in here once every two weeks, three weeks. It's getting in the way. Um, I'm in it for an hour or two on the radios. I don't use a lot of power, therefore I don't need a lot of power to come in. Stop waffling. Get on to the Amazon delivery. The box turned up today, didn't it? I have bought to replace the cheap charge controls because I'm going to waffle again. There's no point in trying to do anything if you're not getting the maximum out of your panels first. And you want to get the maximum out of your battery anyway. So we've got MPPT, the EP Ever Tracer, the little baby 10 amp one. And now we can try and get the maximum power from our panels. So even on a cloudy day, this should produce power. On a cloudy day on this thing, it's cycling through the menu. I've gone past it. <laughs> That's why I don't like them. Uh, yeah. It's flashing to say I've got power, but nothing's registering. However, MPT, PPT should, instead of bringing the voltage down to the battery voltage and slowly charging it, this should convert power more efficiently and produce more. So, we didn't just buy the kit, uh, the, the, the single thing, we bought the, the kit. Um, this comes with, if I can find it first, 
Should have had it all laid out on the bench. A temperature sensor. Which already I've misplaced. Like the charge controller in the, uh, the car. You plug in a little sensor, it me measures, measures the air temperature. I don't need that. So I bought the, the probe. Plug this into there, and I can put the, the probe end by the battery so I can see the temperature off the battery. So I know not to charge it if the battery gets too cold because batteries don't like charging at certain temperatures. So I've got the probe for that. And but it did come, there it is, it did come with a little plug in sensor at the bottom. But that will only tell me the air temperature of where that's positioned. So we won't be using that, we'll use the probe and probe the batteries. We've got a book. Some of these videos on this I've seen people unfold a map. Uh, um, like an audience survey map, but it's nice to see they've cut all the little squares and stuck them in a book instead of just on a, on a map format. And because I bought the kit, I bought the remote meter. So this is programmable to a limit. I can program most things with the buttons, but it's like that. The TV, when you lose your remote, you have to go through the menu, into it, and then up, and you go back, and you go past. So the remote meter has more buttons. We like buttons. Better display. Um, that meter will just tell me either what I've cycled to, like how much power is coming in, in amps, or watts, battery voltage, this, that and the other, and then you've got to go back to the beginning to see it all again. Just like this one. So I've gone past it. Anyway, so this has got a bit, two lines of display, tells you the power amps coming in, state of the battery, the power you're taking out, instead of having to do it separately, or what I've done in the past, wire up separate components. More wise. That also came with a little book. You probably won't read either of those books. And it came with hardware to mount it to a wall. Because that's going to be wall mounted. This didn't come with anything to mount it. You just take screws from something else and put them in here. Uh, so we got them as well. Then we got the lead to plug these together. So I can have them anywhere I want within the limits of the length of the cable. Um, because I won't be relying on that screen. I could have this put on the wall back there behind the radios. I could have it down there on the floor by the battery. And then just have the meter display. Is it called? Remote meter. In, in, in eyesight, so I can probably there that I can see all my information at a glance without having to keep scrolling through it. Um, you know, you've got up and down and menu, but this has got menu up and down, escape, okay, but individual buttons far more better. More information on the screen, far better. Fully programmable compared to can I hit it with a hammer. So that's the update for the shack. We've got an MPPT charge controller, which I should have bought nine, ten years ago. But I never really saw the point of spending the money on getting the maximum out of my solar panels. Um, now things have changed. I want to get the maximum out of my solar panels before I do anything else. I'm going to lose all this stuff at some point, but for now, we're going to temporarily keep it in the box it came in. Um, so yeah, that's the update. After using, for years, random dodgy batteries, a while ago I bought the 110 amp hour ledger battery. It's only a cheapie, but I don't need to spend hundreds on batteries just to run radios for a couple of hours. Um, oh, again, it's the inverter, Victron, I stole that out of the Mark Home too when I sold it because some people might recognise, but yeah, for those that don't know, I did live full-time in a motorhome and relied on solar. Anyway, 
these days we're in a five foot five five foot by five foot wooden shed which is <coughs> the ham radio shack they don't call it a shed we don't necessarily have to keep pointing out that it's it's only yay big um, that's not the point the point is it's a separate room just for radios and it runs it's powered from the sun so at some point I'm going to be wiring that to the wall trying to tidy up all this I've got the breakers here for the charge controller I've got a, a couple of fuse boxes but I use inline fuse everything's got an inline fuse but we'll try not to waffle too much we've been at this for 13 minutes um, I don't know if it's any good because I'm really good at putting the wrong word in now and then or completely changing what I'm thinking and numbers and figures always get mixed up when I'm verbal so this is all going to change and we're going to install them it's exciting times um, as for a little bonus update on the channel, the Land Rover's booked in for the MOT next week. That should be fun, it's 22 years old. Um, bought some new tyres for it. Mud tyres. What else has the Land Rover had done? Nothing. Bit of welding. It's had drop links done, or whatever they're called on the Land Rover, a few months ago. Got a new 511 tactical shirt. It's the same one I wear when I'm wild camping. I've got the long sleeve green one for wild camping. Now I've got the blue one, short sleeves, because I like the short sleeves. What's new in here? I've got the rails for the 817. They were sent to me by a subscriber on YouTube. Uh, and up here I keep little letters and notes I get off people. That's one from, I was camping a while ago, and this one's from Neil's wife. Um, so thanks, Neil and Jamie, who's the son who's done the media messaging because um, Neil doesn't do social media but apparently, apparently for some reason he enjoys watching my channel and he printed out the rails 3D printed these I've got the feet over there but uh, I can't use the feet with that tuner but I can still use the feet in other situations but the rails are nice, they've got little flip down legs too um, but yeah that's the main HF radio for the shack it's only 5 watts and that's sufficient for me um, that's probably going to fall over so that's the update we're going to get it all wired in and then come back with another video as soon as possible um, even with a unicorn right we'll catch you on the next video when I've got a big burn mark on my wall where the charge controller has cooked itself right we'll catch you later on and technology a lot of people like to do this when they end the video, I want to do this. We're going to wire it in now just to see it work. I want to see it light up. <laughs> Whoa. One screw holding it up so far. <laughs> so now let's turn on the battery going into charge controller that's holding with one screw and resting on a bulldog clip. This is only temporary. Tonight or tomorrow I'll move it. Lighting up. 